Yo, what is up, Cast Crazies? It is Rick from Cast Cray Outdoors. We got our guys here with us again from the distance. We got Jay actually in the house. You guys see him here on the multi view, but we also are trying a little different. Hopefully this works out. We got the Zoom uh, meeting going with Matt from Matt Fish and Mission and Manny from Yakin Crazy. Uh, so we got some topics that Matt's kind of kind of pseudo host because I'm poor at planning and uh, coming up with topics. And so we're going to do some off the cuff note fluff as we usually do for you guys and um, see how we go. First off, how was your guys' week? What's new? What's anything cool? Exciting. I'll share my news so, after you. I uh I caught rainbow trout in Ohio. Woo. Yeah, I see that. Was <laughs> caught nice. four of them and ate ate two of them for dinner for Valentine's Day. I saw that video, dude. That was yeah, awesome. Was you guys, if you guys uh get an extra spare moment, check out the link in the description. Click his channel, Matt's Fishing Mission, and watch that video. It's pretty, pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I think it was really cool. How you went I out said, and said, Hey, can I go fishing on Valentine's Day? Is that allowed? She goes, if you bring back trout dinner. That's, That's awesome. awesome. <laughs> right. Was it stocked? It was a stocked lake of friend or a pond? Yeah, it was a stock. It was like a stock, like large private pond, and he never fishes it. And he was like, I I've neglected it. There's, I put a hundred in there a couple years ago. There's like seventy five left. I need somebody to come and get these. Cast cray minner, third cast. Nice. <laughs> Boom. What color? Uh, the gold one. I uh, Ma I think it's uh, was it magic mustard. Or much uh, yes yes uh, okay yeah yeah okay that's cool. instantly i got a follow on the first cast and third cast got one threw it right back out got a second one took a minute to get the fourth, third and fourth one but nice yeah. what about you manny anything uh hashtag is still winter <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <for real. laughs> right? yeah no doubt that's my that's my hashtag so we can fish no just uh just i, I was tempted to go buy some fishing line and spool up all my reels but I'm gonna run out of stuff to do as far as fishing related because there's, I mean, there's no way to really apply it yet. But um, I'm just waiting for the for pre spawn, man. I'm I'm itching to fish, dude. I had just taking care of uh doggy duties. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, no doubt. Man, he got a new puppy, My Milo, right? Yeah, Milo. Yeah. Milo, Milo. Come, Jay. What about you, dude? So I'm trying to stay busy on social media and. Other than that, just working, waiting for the uh, for the ice to melt too. Trying to get out and do some more ice fishing this weekend, hopefully. So stay tuned for that. But we'll see what happens. Dude, instant subscribes, man. When you get that uh, that puppy going on there, you got to do some. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the Adventures awesome. of Manny and Milo. Dude, it's coming in, <laughs> coming this spring. All right. Try to get him activated to the kayak. Right. So many of you. Oh, I'm sorry, Jay. Go ahead. Did I cut you off? No, you didn't. You good? No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. Yeah, many of you have followed the uh, the social, and we got some really cool news, some new partnerships that came up, and uh, and then also good news on our new building. We have a new building. Uh, for those of us that haven't been following the, the news, we actually, uh, this spring, are moving from this warehouse that we're in now, where we have uh, other businesses, my wife and I, located here, to our own independent building for, uh, dedicated specifically for uh, Cast Cray. And so it'll give us like some creative spaces where we can all interact and have fun and meet people and hang out and, and, and then also have distribution. Yeah. It'll, it's going to be sweet. So we got that building all, all plans are done. Everything's approved. We're just waiting for good weather up here, getting that, that ice to melt so that we can break ground and start laying foundations and get this baby in. We're hoping by spring. That's the, that's the goal. But as far as like partnerships too, you know, obviously we know, but uh, we got, some really cool partnerships with uh, with Catchco coming up with uh, Mystery Tackle Box. The bomb just got dropped. Boom. The, the Catchco partnership. Right. So that's uh, we got POs already sent to us. We're actually uh, dropping in the retail box um, coming this fall. So we will be in Walmart. We will be in Academy. We will be in Dick's Sporting Goods, and we will be in all of the Panfish. Uh, uh, retail boxes. So check us out. I can't say what's going to be in there. You're going to have to buy and find out, but it's going to be a good one. I hear, I saw a preview of everything else is going to be in there. All the other companies are sweet too. It's going to be worth it. So check that out. Sweet, sweet. Second big news of the last two weeks here is we uh, established a partnership with Fishbrain, which is sick. Everybody knows Fishbrain. Yeah. I think everyone knows what Fishbrain is. 
Okay, so Fishbrain is, I'm gonna read this off uh, off this script here that, that uh, they provided me with, but Fishbrain is literally the number one's fishing app. It provides tools and knowledge to help anglers get better at fishing. And it does it. I mean, for me alone, it's. I use it all the time. <laughs> dude, it's been I awesome. I use it all the time. Ways that you can do that. It ultimately helps you catch more fish, really, but it helps you find nearby fishing locations for your next trip, discover best times of fish, what you should throw. Um, and it also allows you to socialize with other anglers, learning, not only learning from a lot of us, learn, yeah. like we even met new people from the app. It's, it's a yeah. great, great resource. Um, I've met fishing buddies, went out, you know, and, and fish with guys. Um, it lets you f uh, share your fishing memories, brag about latest catches. Again, and one of the, the biggest features that I was going to kind of re-mention is, um, you know, you can, when you're on there sharing a catch, if, if you so decide to do so and not just post, you can select what baits you're actually using. And we're going to be in that platform as an option to select. So if you're catching that trout, uh, like Matt was saying, in that pond, you could mark that spot. You can select cast cray, magic mustard, and you're going to have the ability to purchase it right there on that app, which is pretty, pretty sweet. And it communicates with our e-commerce store and all that. So I think one thing that's really cool about that aspect of Fishbrain is that for me, when I get on Fishbrain, when I look at the local lakes near me, like Nemesilla and Portage Lakes and all those things, yeah, I'm seeing what people are catching, what they're catching fish with on my bodies of water opposed to watching someone on youtube who's in texas catching them on something else oh you know for I mean? real yeah so if i see somebody posting a picture of a huge bass and they're like oh i caught it on you know this bait and right. it's at nemesilla then i know that bait's working from my local lake so i know that i can oh if i buy that it'll probably work you know what i mean oh for sure so that's something that it kind of helps you not have to uh get overwhelmed with that feeling of being in a tackle shop and looking at every color that they have and not knowing where to go from there you know what i mean right i mean I'll, last last podcast we talked about like stumbling across new lakes and stuff and like where you should fish how you should fish i don't know why it crossed my brain but dude fish brain is an amazing tool and a great resource to use when you're coming up on a lake that you've never been to you can pull up you know spots on the lake it'll tell you where people have been and um, mm -hmm. yeah check it out i'll put the link down in the description I'll also link the video from our last podcast up here you'll be able to see it here yeah. but. one of the coolest things about that i love to do on fish brain which I, if you're a competitive person, this is, this is awesome. If you go onto there and you hit leaderboards, you can go by species and see who's caught the most of rock bass, smallmouth from all the users. And uh, I made it a point to be the number one smallmouth for the month. Of, it was like last May, but I was like, I can't believe I actually hit number one on smallmouth and what held that spot hey. that month. I didn't even know that was a feature on fish brain. I, I didn't, did. I'm definitely going to be on yeah. that now. I didn't either. You can go to you the leaderboard. You just made a monster. Where you stack up. Yep. Oh, you just made a 14 monster. day. It's over. Free trial. So, you know, it's kind of a win-win. You, It's a risk-free trial. So you can click the link, sign up, give them some love. But uh, Matt, kind of transitioning into our podcast, the juicy part of the show here. Um what kind of topics did you pick for us, man? What are you thinking? Well, one of the things I was going to talk about is how do you guys go about finding new spots? Obviously, fish brain is a great one. How do you guys look for spots or or maybe spots within spots, like spots on a big lake? How do you go about attacking um, like a, a new discovery or a new spot or a new place on a big lake that you haven't fished yet or attacked yet? So there's a few there's a few things that I that I've did in the past that have helped find new fishing locations and one of them um if you want to find like a broad location that everyone kind of knows about that you just want to go check it out if you look up I mean if you just google your local ODNR yeah. well for us our ODNR um you can look up and it'll tell you every single fishable lake or pond in your area and you can go look at every single one if you want to and then there's even been times where you know obviously not every single pond or lake's listed on there to where you know, I just pull up my maps on my phone and look for a body of water and drive past it. If it looks like it's fishable and not, you know, private or whatever, and then you grab some rods or, you know, go out and try it. And then, like I said, Matt already mentioned fish brains, a big one. That's one. I see a bunch of bodies of water. I'm like, wait, I've never even heard of that. Where's that at? And then you pulled up. Oh, it's, you know, 20 minutes away. And then also just like the old school way, like it sounds like a nineties kid here, but you just drive around you just drive near where, you know, there's water. And you look for little creeks, rivers, you know, runoffs, anything that, you know, 
you can walk down and fish, you know what I mean? I mean, that's how I find new spots. Yep. Kind of in a continuation too to to our last podcast. Um well, f- actually first I'm going to divert. I'm going to take two steps back. A lot of people ask, Manny had mentioned uh dipsy diver with a spoon. And and a lot of people were like, "What is a dipsy diver and a spoon?" You're going to wild our oh. spoon and they're they're googling, you know. So briefly before we get into what I was going to say, a dipsy diver is like a little saucer for lack of better terms and they come in various sizes but you can wire them up to where they'll fight against the flow of your troll and get you down real deep. And a spoon is just literally, it's a spoon shaped kind of oval shaped bait that has a hook on the back of it in various sizes, colors, configurations, and it spins and it flashes. and, and Very like flashy, it. a lot of bright colors and a flashy lure to attract them at that depth you're fishing at. Yeah. So look, thanks for that diversion guys. I just wanted to make sure I cover the people. <laughs> I was looking at my notes here, um, but back to your question, Matt, uh, and in continuation to our last show, topo maps are are huge. And I actually use, um, like, uh, let's see if I can get it on here, Navionics. I believe mm-hmm. it is Garmin uh, owns Navionics, but it it gives you a lot of, like, where the creek beds are. You know, so before, again, we mentioned this before, there's no, in at least in the state of Ohio, there's no natural lakes so they were dammed up creeks or rivers and a lot of times those fish like to you know sit or congregate in those original creek beds sure because there's natural rocks that are exposed if you think of the flow of how that was for all the years there's a lot of cover that's natural down there and so you can pull this up on navionics and find out where the original creek beds were road beds that might have got covered up different structure points to fish and it's become a really cool tool for me at the, you know, I don't know if you guys knew this either, but I know when I first downloaded FishBrain a couple of years ago and was learning, uh, they didn't, I don't, I'm not sure that they offered like topo maps, but I was on there the other day and I was like just looking around and they, it's like a feature on the pro membership where you can get a topo map for any lake or anything in your area or, you know, wherever. Cool. And you can pull it right up on FishBrain and see exactly where, you, you know. I don't, know, I don't really look at topo maps too much. I don't want to start looking at them because they actually are really beneficial. You know what I mean? Oh, so, heck yeah, man. Um, but yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. I think, I, and, I, and I didn't want to be redundant with that question because I know we talked about it last week. One of the things I wanted to kind of follow up on that I thought about that I didn't really think to to mention is that when you're doing, especially if you're pond hopping, yeah, is you can go on Google Earth and you can go by date yep. and you can find when those ponds were initiated. And I like the sweet spot of like the seven years, seven to ten years. Because then that pond's been established. It's been able to have like, uh, you know, fish transferred into it either by person or by bird. Because birds a lot of times will get the eggs on their beak and their legs. And that's how they transfer in some of those fish that, you know, just wouldn't naturally be in there. Which is crazy. I learned that a couple of years ago. And I was wondering like, how do you get fish in a that's mountain insane. lake? Yeah. It's from crazy. the birds. Yeah, herons. The birds bring them in on the, on the eggs that stick to their feet, usually like herons or uh you know okay well think well think you know what's crazy about that think of this so if birds are transferring eggs by you know just flying and dipping into the water catching other fish or whatever think of like the very like predatory fish that a bird would not you know have any business with like i mean how does a muskie just end up in a lake up in a mountain somewhere you know what i mean right like dude you right you know what i'm saying like what are the odds of that you know what i mean Mm -hmm. yep so uh I know uh, I'm a I'm a few hundred miles away from you guys, but uh, I know in Cincinnati we're getting to 55 next week. What are your guys' plans? What are you looking at for next week? See, I mean, I'm in a weird spot yeah. where I don't really ice up, and you guys have probably thick ice up there yeah. in the Akron in northern area. So I don't but, know if it's going to do much for you, except for maybe open up some some creek flow. If anything, yeah. I might hit like the Cuyahoga River or something. Yeah, like at Tannery or something like that, and For just sure. and just see if I can get a bite. You know, Cause late it's, season cause it's steelhead. Up. You know that steelhead runs. You know, there's still stragglers that are hanging around. You know, yeah, st- stragglers and even the ones that made it in that are just backed up on dams or whatever <laughs> that mm-hmm. can't jump. So it might be a good time to uh, Rocky River. Rocky River should be. Uh, I might drive through the metro parks and see how Rocky looks. You have to hit me up on that one. It's going to be dicey because we're going to be in that we're going to be in that balance to where is the snow melt going to going to blow us out 
Right. Or is it going to kind of hold off and the river will be okay, but the snow will kind of stick on the bank? I don't know. Yeah. We're yeah. Keeping eye on it. Fingers crossed. Fingers I, I crossed. know our ice here is, I mean, the people are still ice fishing and it, you know, it, Oh yeah. Like, well, I think last, when we went, it was like 17 degrees out, I think. And it's, yep. it's been in the twenties the last week and it, the ice is even thicker now somehow. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. I don't know if you guys saw my story, though, uh, but I went to like one of the local lakes right off the Metro Parks, uh, Wallace Lake. And it was a few guys out there, but maybe I don't know if it was just a location where I was attempting to like test the ice. It's, uh, you know, you could tell somebody was dragging a sled because there was, you know, the sled tracks and then the foot trails. And I was like, OK, somebody's been out here. And I looked and it was like slushy. And I'm like, mm. I don't know about like ice fishing and slush to me doesn't sound like they're supposed to go together. Normally, sometimes no. it depends on how big the ice story. is. <laughs> yeah, surface. I'm pretty sure like the surface still gets a lot of moisture and may you know slush up, but uh, I wasn't I wasn't about to risk it. <laughs> right, right. No, yeah. I've been I've been on the ice sometimes where like you know you have good six seven inch ice underneath, and then it rains, and then wants to freeze a crust on top. And you'll step through and you're thinking you're going through, but you're just going through that first layer. Right. It's sketchy. And boat. Right. And right. Right. Or you get like that, like two or three inches of clear ice that's on top. And then you get like that foggy ice that's underneath that's not as strong. You know what I mean? That's kind of sketchy too. You know what I mean? Very. I'm, uh, I think I'm going to hit up uh, something I, I want to do this year heavy that I really haven't done before because it just hasn't been my wheelhouse. But. Uh, next week, I'm going to get the yak out and I'm going to go crappie fishing on East Fork Lake because it's one of the m major and mo best crappie fisheries around. And I just I've neglected crappie fishing myself because I just love smallmouth and bass fishing. So I think next week I'm going to I'm going to try to get me a mess of crappie. I think cooking that trout got me fired up to eat some fish. Oh, dude. So I think I think I want to come home with a bucket full of crappie. Got to try that shore launch cage in, man. Woof. Yeah, I was like, you, you guys know about the Shore Launch? Mm -mm. It's Shore Launch is the brand. I'll, I'll uh, just for fun, and we're not sponsored. Shore Launch, if you want to sponsor us, I mean, you'd be happy, you know, hit us up. <laughs> right, right. But uh, we'll put we'll put a description in the link, or in or we'll put a link in the description below for Shore Launch too, just for fun. But we'll, it's basically a breading, and it's um, it's a, it's a really good breading. Like you, you basically just you don't even need eggs. You just you actually. Uh, dry off your fish fillets and toss it right mm -hmm. in the bag and do give it a tumble and it's good to fry and they have oh, cajun yeah. and all that that's what you always use i think i've seen that at your house before yeah right you ever do uh, again i'm on a tangent today um you ever like have southern style like bluegill oh yeah mm -hmm. where you like cut cornmeal style you basically cut the head off you gut it you scale it and then you bread it and then fry it with the fins and all and then you eat the tail and all that. Dude, I we did it the first time. Basically, <laughs> any fish that's southern fried is generally like it's the the least amount of work is done to it. Like you're gutted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <and fry. laughs> Dude, it was good. And you got more you got more meat off of it. Yeah. You had to pick at it. But... Yeah. A lot of people don't like a lot of people don't like filleting. Like southern people, they don't like attempting to fillet a fish because they feel it's a waste. They yeah. say they say best part of the fish is with the bones in which i agree to a certain extent like i do too with everything you know you have that flavor but i'm not fighting bones uh like i'm a fillet guy right yeah, yeah. i'd rather just take a clean bite and enjoy mm -hmm. it and be done with it you nothing know? like a walleye fillet or crappie that's your that's yeah. your uh, that's your transition back to our conversation see how i did there <laughs> tell you what the trout, last week's trout two slices of lemon a pat of butter and the cascade grilling spice I know it's not traditionally like the fish spice, but it was on point. It was probably one of the <laughs> freshest, cleanest tastes of fish. Oh, it was so good. Was oh, dude, so good. I was like salivating watching you uh, prep it all. Wait, what'd you do? Wear your GoPro on your on your hat? Yeah, that, that's, <laughs> why I, that's how I film all That was clean, dude. I was like, so oh. I got a mount. Usually I keep right on the bill of my hat. Yeah. Yeah, me and my wife were watching it, and she was like, "Man, he's cooking. Uh, he's cooking a trout dinner." And we were watching. And she was like, "Man, he's putting those lemons in there." <laughs> Man, he does this for his wife. Right? I know. I was like, know? I was like, I'm going to KFC right now. <laughs> <laughs> I got my wife some, uh, you know, some Mick fish. <laughs> some Mick fish, right? <laughs> big, big and tasty. <laughs> Mick fillet. <laughs> all right, it's coming, and I know we're all itching for it. I already know so, what you're about to say. How do you guys prepare? For, for spring, 
as far as like, what are you doing to your gear? Are you, are you doing, are you, are you getting your reels cleaned, locked in, lubricated? Like what, what is your MO for getting ready for spring? I'm going to tell you this. I got all my reels locked and loaded and they've been sitting on the deck of my boat for about three months. So, <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they're locked and loaded and I've been stocking up on the lubrication's on, all crusty again. He's got yeah. It. I'm going to have to redo it. Um, but most of my reels are pretty new still. So I didn't have to do too much maintenance this year, luckily. So nice. Um, obviously next year I'll have to take them apart and clean them and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I usually in, in the off season, I'll buy a, a ton of tackle and get it a ridiculous amount because I don't like having to go to a fishing location or get on a lake and be like, oh, I don't have any of these or like any of that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I try to get like a head start on all that. And then I, this year it was a little bit different because I actually like decked my boat and stuff. So I have like compartments. So I'm filling those up with certain things and uh, working on working on spring fishing more or less preparation of how i'm going to spring fish uh, not uh, not really necessarily fishing itself you know what i mean because i'm already ready for that you know right it's more or less just how i'm going to be fishing this year so it's going to be a big difference because i've got a graph on my uh boat for the first time and then like i said a deck and compartments and stuff so it's going to be like a game changer this year for sure right jay i think you hit it on the head like i'm less about because i feel like you know in the winter time like you're ready to go because there's nothing much to do. All your tackles organized, right. all your reels are greased, everything's ready to go. And I like to lay out a plan for like the year of what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Like where I like places I've been dying to go that I have to put on the books now so that I give myself like the the obligation and the, and the priority to go and fish those spots and do those things. Right. So I need right. a plan of attack as far as like what I want to do more 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 than like getting my my stuff ready sure is like the plan of attack so yeah like this year i've got laid out uh i'm definitely going to hit up erie with manny and the yaks uh because i've never fished erie <laughs> and i'm like i am dying to fish erie <laughs> do you get hey, seasick five pound smallies hey dude i'll go but keep me in the break wall, please. <laughs> right. Or you're so, going to have yeah, to fashion same. like a two by four hey. with with noodles on both sides. <laughs> right. Yeah. Matt, you get seasick. You ever been in the ocean? Yeah, I, I grew up in West Palm Beach. Oh, so you don't get seasick then? You got your sea no, legs? No, no. Oh, okay. You should be good then. Lieutenant Dan's got his legs. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I do not have my legs. No? No, I went on Lake Erie one time and it was, I mean, it was like I didn't even enjoy myself. It was miserable. Dude, you got to take that meclizine, man. You'll be dude, good. I, I, dude, I took three Dramamine before I went just because I, had, I used to live in California, so I was on the ocean a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's worse. Yeah, right. I went to Lake Erie. Not California. It, well, no, right. So then the, the captain on this boat in Lake Erie, he's like, he's like, you ever been on the, in the ocean? I'm like, yeah. And a bunch of times he's like, well, this ain't like the ocean. He was like, there's there's professional, you know, saltwater anglers that come here and get seasick on Lake Erie. I'm like, oh, thanks a lot. You know what I mean? So that might have been a part of it too, like got in my head a little bit. But yeah, it was hey, definitely. Manny, are you listening to this? When we do yeah, the one, first- when we do the one v one v one, we take Jay out into the heavy chop. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I'd be white knuckling. We got to do a Lake Erie like, verse. You guys oh. got to come on my. Got to do a little big, big water one. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> it's, it's sketchy. It's sketchy. I think I have Florida on my radar, and Colorado is always a couple times a year on my radar. So those are my. I'm gonna have to buy the life trip. alert before I go and do that. Right. I, I was already so I was already nervous about Lake Erie, and then Manny posted that that clip on Instagram of him tipping his kayak almost. And I was like, Oh, I mean, you know, yeah. he's floating around 50 foot of water. It's like, it's like an ocean. Like, no, oh, thanks. Here? Mm-hmm. yeah, no, no, thanks. I'll tell, uh, tell you one thing though. Um, I learned my lesson from that, from that, uh, that one experience. Like I, I learned real quick on how to respect the water right, and not right. have, not be overly confident in, you know, the capacity of your kayak. Cause I'm thinking I got a Hobie. In my right. mind, the Cadillac of kayaks and unflippable and just not paying attention and mix that with a little bit of the elements. Right. Cause, cause you, were, you were, you were, you you had a fish on, right? Yeah. I was fighting the fish. Yeah. On the side and, of and you leaned over, you leaned too much and it started tipping. Yeah. Oof. Yep. Well, Ooh. I puckered up quick on that one. Oh, oh I sure. Bet. Sure. <laughs> I bet. That, that makes you like question your whole life. Like in one second, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> mm-hmm. I got to straighten up. <laughs> Yeah, every year my boxes uh, get real nasty, so I I, I take oh, yeah. my boxes apart. This year I upgraded, um, and and got some new boxes, and so I, I 
you know, go through everything. You know, the, the square bill always ends up in the jerk bait box or something. So I kind of reorganize and I hate that and do that. Yeah. I hate it. I'm always, I'm always like fighting myself. Okay. Do I organize this according to like fish species I know. or do I just, do I organize it just what it is? And I pack it all, what you're going to use. Yeah. Right? This year I just did what it is. So I know if I'm doing a, a small mouth trip or something, I'll be picking and pulling and yeah, but right. Is what it is. Well, usually I'll pack like a like I'll have like an empty box, and then if someone's like like Hey, we're gonna go, you know, we're gonna go, we're gonna hop on my boat and come here. I'm like, sure, let me let me there get some tackle together, and then I'll just road, throw it all in one box. box. Exactly, the yeah, to-go box. Wrote, right, exactly. To go box, <laughs> I got a little happy meal that I just take with me, and just you know, when we're going somewhere. Yep, we're working on some vinyl <laughs> bags actually. Oh, that yeah. might work really well. I forgot for about that. that. So I'm man, gonna- and he's dropping bombs today, folks. Look for the vinyl bags. He said catch co and vinyl bags in one video. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't call it a money bag because that's a that's a trademark term. We're gonna call it vinyl bag. <laughs> that's how I that's how I organize my stuff is by type of bait and then I keep it to go or to like that I can just pick and choose, throw them in, grab throw it the quick. backpack. Smart. Mm-hmm. Take it, take it going. Smart. My smart. stuff is all over the place. I have no like I have a my my yak crate is bass specific then i have a cooler that also doubles as a kayak uh rod you know i take all my um trolling gear and my trolling rods and everything and my my rod holders and uh i got like a small panfish plastic container so like i don't have any, i don't have much for musky or anything else but i mean my bass my bass box is getting a little bit out of hand like i almost have to stand on top of it to close it <laughs> oh man. Oh, no. But I've never right. um I've never really to be completely honest, this will be my first pre-spawn bass. Like I'm 36 years old, period. Like I never I, I didn't grow up targeting bass. So like this this itch I have for prepping for pre-spawn is a brand new feeling. Oh yeah. I've never done this before. Especially from a kayak. So th- this year is gonna be the first year I've actually ever like fished in the pre-spawn in spring like heavy like you know yeah. i went out fishing in the spring of course but um not to the extent that i'm going to this year you know what i mean where i'm like out there hunting like the big fish you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah especially you know when i see these pictures of people last year in the spring catching you know five and mm-hmm. six pounders and they're like oh this is a pre-spawn they're catching five and six pounders you know what i mean texas people five and six pounders in the state of ohio Slaunch. That's a big deal. That's a big. That's a big deal. That's the equivalent of like a twelve pounder in Texas, right? Like, you know what I mean, like. All right, dude. My bucket list. I man, get I jealous wanna... of Erie people. Like the, in Cincinnati, we just have all the yeah. tribs to go to the Ohio. Yeah. And I see these Erie fish, and they're like, "Oh, your big small mouth is like three and a half pounds. Look at this stick." Like, <laughs> uh, right. And I'm like, Mm-mm. "It's no fair. The Great Lakes are just a different world. They they are the, pigs. Yeah, it's not even you know. I don't it, even know how they fit all that food in there, dude." Yeah, it's insane. Footballs. I've seen some videos. Of I'm, doing a, uh, I'm doing a Lake St. Clair trip springtime for Smallies. Dude. Oh, with, with a Hobie guy. Dude. Oh, wow. I didn't even know that was a thing. I'm excited Maybe. for that. That's nice. sick. I, I know I'm going to Florida in September on vacation. And uh, the we got a beachfront house already like reserved and they have, they have their own fishing section that's dedicated to people that are staying at this place. And uh, the lady on the phone said like, she's like, I don't know why, but like, you know, we don't have a whole lot of people that are fishermen that show up. Like they just want to sit at the beach and do nothing. So I'm like, Oh, oh, okay, we can do this. Yeah. I'm like, I might just have to look for some, I don't even know what part of Florida I'm going to be in, but if I'm close enough to somewhere that has peacock bass, I'm definitely going to make a, make a, a point to, Try Dude. to go to like a little creek or something or a river that has them there. I mean, for, for sure. sure. For sure. I mean, that's for a bucket sure. list fish for me, like 100%. Are you a surf fish? Uh, absolutely. I just told you I'm not going on Lake Erie. I'm definitely not going in the ocean uh, <laughs> where there's sharks. Well, sur- surf on the surf, on the no, beach. Fish from oh, the okay. Beach so on, on, the, beach. on the beach. Oh, okay. Okay. So, uh, no. hey, Jay, you know what's funny about that? And my wife, my wife can attest. She's, oh, she's, she can hear us. But, um, my first time ever going to oceanic waters, like coastal waters, um, I said the same thing. I'm like, dude, I'm not getting in the water. Like, it's sharks in the ocean. I'm not happening, especially, you know, I'm not about to get caught nowhere I'm not supposed to be. <laughs> Ask my wife, like, I would say an hour and a half, two hours to being in Florida. I was, like, waist deep in the ocean. Oh, no. 
like on the other side of the sandbar. And when you set, when you stir fish like Matt's right, you can't cast from the from the shore. I mean, from the from the uh, beach. But the best way to do it is to go to you like got to raise your arms up. Uh-huh. Just stick your rod backwards and oh, cast it as far as you can. Just launch yeah, you it. keep your bell open and walk back to the beach. Oh yeah, that's a yeah, that's a good point too. I got so, a surf rod you can borrow. So so one thing I'm worried about with with surf fishing and stuff too is I'm not completely familiar with ocean oceanic fish. So mm-hmm. if I catch one, <laughs> I'm not gonna it. know if it's going to bite my hand off if I try to grab it or you know. What Always I'm think it will. Always. Yeah, that's think what. It yeah, will. I mean, I think that now Most I'm like you know. Will. <laughs> I think that with freshwater fish, if I catch something that doesn't look like I caught a freshwater drum in the Kyogre, and I didn't know what it was. When I picked it up, I was like, "Is this fish gonna? I don't even know what it is. Is it gonna bite my hand off or what?" <laughs> fish are scary, dude. Some they can, are, they can especially be. in the We're ocean, up. dude. Yeah, and the ocean is different. It's different. Oh. You can buy a cart though. Like when you go, when you go, like you say you're going to Florida, right? Yeah. You're gonna have to buy like a a guest um, non-residential fishing <clears throat> license, right? And when you go pick that up, you can get like a. They actually have like a little booklet. And a lot of places that'll tell you like what fish is uh, edible, you know, oh, how okay. good, it, you know, all that. Ocean fishing have, like, for dummies, essentially. Yeah, that's what yeah. I I used when I went to the Outer Banks because I didn't know either. Right, right. Yeah, I was I throwing I was throwing fishes back, and people like I was telling people what I caught, and they was like, "Dude, that's some of the best eating fish." And I'm like, "Well, I don't know." <laughs> right, I don't. Yeah, but I'm from Ohio. I fish in Lake Erie on a kayak. Right. No. <laughs> I'm telling you, be prepared. Be prepared to see a lot of Florida catches on the on the uh, jerk bait this year. Nice. And, that's, and the popper. So I'm talking saltwater catches. I'm going to catch plenty of bass down there in Fort Myer and on the Gulf. But that jerk bait. Oh, I just thought we're going too. surf fishing with that jerk bait. It's going to catch some stuff. Oh, so nice. you, so you know where else I'm going I'm to probably end up going this year too is I'm going to go to South Carolina on a, on a striped bass fishing uh, trip that I go on every Dude, stop it. You guys are making me jealous. Oh, dude, it is awesome. It, it, you stay in this cabin in the middle of the woods, and the dude gets up at 5 o'clock in the morning, and you guys go out on his boat, and you just you cast for eight hours, and you get – I've hit my limit both times that I've went. Dang. And uh, so – and. Sure, I'll come. You, no get, problem. you get the captain's limit too, so you go, you go home with 40 stripers at the end of the day. You know what I mean? If there's three of you, you know what I mean? Dude. And he fillets them for you, which is even nice. You don't have to do the work. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm down. Nice. All right. So other than like the gear, what have you guys under like bait wise or style wise as far as fishing? What have you underutilized that you've made it a point this year to really focus on? Like a style of fishing or a bait style of fishing that you really want to focus on that you really haven't. And for me, when I first got a hold of on December 21st, when I first threw the cast crate jerk bait, I neglected jerk baits for so long. Mm-hmm. And I know it's a great winter bait. I've always heard it's a great winter bait, but there's just so many other go-tos like comfort zones for me. Right. So this year I had to buy two Plano boxes because I wanted to get like every color of the cast crate jerk bait. Mm. <laughs> 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 yeah, ironically, yeah, that's jerk bait for me. I'm gonna I'm gonna tear it up with jerk baits. I'm talking saltwater, freshwater. I want to make that like a priority bait for me to get comfortable with. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. For uh, for me, the I'm, reason for that is that I know that the jerk bait is such a cold water killer that I want to be good and comfortable with it throughout the year. That when it comes time to hit the struggle bus, oh, yeah. I know how, like how to attack with my jerk bait. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. That makes that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I'm with you, dude. L- literally, ditto. ditto. I, and and it's cop, kind of copy paste from last year. Last year, I was doing the same thing, uh, I, and then I, I kind of like faded into what I became, kind of uh, uh, comfort in the familiar. So I I, I started, you know, kind of challenging myself with the jerk bait, and then migrated right into, you know, other things that I'm familiar with. But this year, I'm gonna press reset and uh, get back on that jerk bait. I literally sure. have like a ton of baits that I've that I haven't, I'm not comfortable with. Like my go-tos that I use all the time <clears throat> is pretty much every style of finesse fishing besides a shaky head. Is I'm, That's what I kind of roll with, unfortunately, all the time. And then I threw a, I'll throw a square bill around here and there, but yep. like I'm definitely not comfortable with it, you know? But I think this year will be a little bit different because I'm going to have a graph so I know my depths and stuff. Because I'd always feel like it was pointless for me to throw a square bill on my boat because 
I didn't know if I was in 30 feet of water or, or if I was in, you know, shallow water where you should throw it. You know what I mean? Right. So this year I'm definitely utilizing the jerk bait, the spinner bait, the chatter bait, all baits I don't use. The uh, square bill. I mean, I just don't use them enough because I rely on the finesse style of fishing so much. You know what I mean? Yep. For sure. My thing I'm working on is uh, jigs. Oh, Flip, I, I flipping love, jigs? I love jigs. Like a flipping jig? Uh, flipping jigs. Yeah, flipping jigs. Uh, football jigs, jigs. And I'm working on flipping and pitching too uh, with, with my new bait caster setup. I never, like, I had a few jigs last year, but I didn't, like I said, like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep it 100. I'm new to bass fishing. Yeah. I have bass fish before. I've caught plenty of bass, but I don't consider myself a bass fisherman as much as I'm looking to be going into this upcoming season. So when I used to fish jigs, I would raise them probably four feet off the bottom. Oh, uh, okay. You know, Everything, everything I thought of, like with worms and jigs, like you lift it up off the bottom, you lift it up off the bottom, let it fall. You lift it up and let it fall. And then I started watching videos where guys were just dragging them across the bottom. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, I, and I've never, I was like, okay, so maybe that's probably why I didn't catch him. <laughs> yep. was it, I yeah. probably was from in front of him like every time. You got to pick apart your body of water you're fishing too. Cause I mean, mm -hmm. like I've, I've caught them popping them off the bottom, just exactly how you, you know, explained. I've caught them yeah. like that. And then, just uh, this past year, like right early fall, I was catching them, dragging them on the bottom. You know what I mean? So every body water is different. But usually the go-to is dragging it on the bottom for me. That's that's usually the go-to. That's how I try first. I hit them docks with it. And, oh, yeah. And pad stems. Let them float down. Mm -hmm. Let them just flutter. You know yep. What I mean? Yep. Poking. Manny, I did what you did are doing this year. Jigs were my uncomfortable, like three years ago. Mm -hmm. They were my uncomfortable, non-confidence bait. Yeah. And they, they moved right to the top. I, I know it's going to, it's going to happen for you. Mm -hmm. And my mm -hmm. wife watched me all year fish a jig because she was uncomfortable with it. And the next year mm -hmm. she started off spring. We went to Texas, caught her PB largey on a, mm -hmm. on a, just a regular uh, flipping jig in a, in a, yeah. a lizard. Yep. Mm -hmm. And now she's a fan of jigs. So it's like, once you start using them, it'll go from your least comfortable to your most comfortable. Yeah. Throw that I'm crawl looking for on the back. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yep. Nice. Any I mean, like, I, like I said, bass fishing is kind of new, so the the jig is the first. I mean, the jig that that's the first thing I thought of. But like I said, like everything, like I, I I'm not like Jay said, I'm not familiar with square bills. Uh, Matt, you mentioned I just I just told you guys recently that I didn't even like for me jerk baits was walleye baits. Walleye, oh, yeah. Baits. <laughs> yeah. I've never for bass with jerk baits, so that's brand new to me. Like I'm yeah. I'm a, I'm gonna be dealing with a lot of brand news this season, but I'm looking forward to it. Let's get it. Nice. Yeah, I had a kind of a fun topic uh, in the world of like, you know, YouTube and online fishing. Who's someone that maybe has like a larger following that that you were either inspired by or maybe actually made a personal connection with, were able to talk to, that was able to pass on knowledge to you, or or maybe that that you know is a larger channel that follows you and gives you advice or kind of. Is there anybody for you like that in that space that kind of you looked at to kind of not really model yourself after, but just were inspired by? And I'll lead off. I'll say for mine, it was uh, I actually found this person using a hashtag because I'm a creek walker and I use the hashtag Creek Fishing Adventures. Um, and I found John Dalton, who's got the yep. YouTube channel Creek Fishing Adventures. And he is I mean, the guy does almost exactly what I do. Creek walking, wading and stuff like that. And uh, I've gotten to actually, you know, communicate through comments and then hop on some live, you know, like live streams and, you know, chat with them here and there once in a while. But um, I, I like I like Creek, Creek Fishing Adventures. He's been a, he's been a good like source of inspiration for me. Yeah, I've, I've watched uh, I watch him all the time. Actually, I found him uh, looking up like waiting or whatever. And uh, he is just like, I don't know if you've <laughs> ever watched him before, but he, mm -hmm. he is like, skyrocketed in the YouTube like world like i think he only started his channel like four years ago and he ended up gaining like twenty thousand subs in two years and then he i'm pretty sure he quit his job at twenty thousand subs yep. and then he fast forward a year later he was at fifty thousand subs and then he just made a video the other day so now he's his channels yeah. five years he's at eighty thousand already he's like just blowing up nice and um so i, I mean i watched him and I, i've communicated with him too via like comments and uh instagram and things like that um, I think for honestly, like for, for my channel personally, like 
I never reached out to anyone who was real big just because they get so many, com- you know, what are the odds they're going to reply back to you? You know what I mean? But this is ironic, but one of the first people that I reached out when I only had like 50 subs, like when I just first started, like after all my friends had subbed already, you know, mm-hmm. ironically it was 50, 50 fishing. I messaged him on Facebook and nice. I, I actually like I've f- watched him on YouTube like years pa- back. Me and him were just talking about this. Um, he actually made a few videos with, um, with flair from the Guggen squad. Nice. And, um, I had watched one of his videos like four years ago and I just didn't know that it was him until me and him were talking about it. He sent me this link to this video. I'm like, man, I've seen this before. Yeah. And, uh, when I had first started my channel, I found his channel on, uh, actually I was looking up John boat stuff and I found his John boat videos and I found him. Nice. And then, uh, I noticed that his, what his name was, you know what I mean? I yeah. seen him on Facebook in some groups and I realized like, man, he's gotta be close to me. And I reached out to him on Facebook, like, Hey, like what's some advice on growth and like content and stuff. And, um, you know, super nice guy. He reached, he reached back out and was like, Hey, just keep doing this. And this is more important to that. And blah, 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 blah. Gave me all kinds of information that I was kind of like flabbergasted about. Cause I was only 50 subs and you know, yeah. here this guy is with, you know, 14 K almost telling me all this stuff. And I'm just like, you know, but it was good advice. So that's somebody that I definitely, uh, reached out to that, that definitely helped me in, as far as content creation goes. Yeah. Quick time out there. So if you guys don't know already, uh, we did do a social drop with the information, but Joe at 5050 Fishing has become part of the Cast Craig crew. He's part of our team, a strong asset of the team. Uh, we're looking forward to growing together with him. And uh, yeah, he's pumped. He's pumped to be an ambassador for the brand and yep. and kind of help uh, along too. And he's got a lot to share. So check him out. We'll put his link down in the description as well. But uh, yeah. Uh, for me, I will say... Ironically, he's not really a, a a a fishing guy, but his vlog style and and his um you know you kind of either love his style or you hate his style. And for me, I I'm in the middle, um, but I learn a lot from him. And it was fishing with Flair. Oh yeah. yeah. And so um you know I've reached out to him and have communicated back and forth with him. Also Drew, you know at, at Guggen, you know Longers TV, and then um. You know, I've communicated with with fifty fifty as well, and then, right. but I like the old guys too. I I I still look a lot um, and, and kind of follow a lot of of Kevin Van Dam. I'm a big fan of of KVD, especially his jerk bait. Uh, he he's a jerk bait like ambassador, so he's all about that. Um, so uh, if you want to learn about jerk baits, check him out. And then um, also Jimmy Houston, old school. But, oh yeah, Jimmy Houston. That's like the Bill Dance days, right? Classic, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bill Dance too, dude. Yeah. Three Wiseman. Three Wiseman. Three Wiseman, dude. Right there. Yeah. Woof. Yeah. Yeah. I talk about some uh, some. My age again. Yeah. And Gary, and Gary. If we had to add a fourth, uh, we'd be Gary. Gary Yamamoto. Oh. So, uh, fun fact about Gary Yamamoto. He just did. You know that he just competed in an in the MLF yeah. tour in Florida. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I, d- I did see that. Yeah. on on stat board. I was I going see, through the yeah. standings and I saw his name. And I, I was, was like, like, "What? What? <laughs> oh, he's he's in old, his seventies, isn't he? Yeah, he is. <laughs> What's the fancy uh, uh, beef? Like the the, the type Ra- of ragu? Ra- ragu? Ragu? Is it ragu or is it? It's, or no, that's a, <laughs> I was like fancy beef. Ragu, what? that's that's ragu sauce for fancy pasta. Beef. <laughs> oh, what is it? It's y- yeah, w- wagyu. 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 wagyu, wagyu, not ragu. Oh, people. you just made this beef. I was so lost. At first. Yeah, that's it. I was thinking pasta, man. Gary yeah. Yamamoto has a wagyu farm, also. So he actually farms the like fancy beef. Hmm. You know, you did not know that. Yeah, pretty sweet. Okay, so my guy is being from the uh, kayak, you know, side of it is um, field trips with Robert Field, which uh, I know that probably goes over a lot of you guys' head, but he runs um, where he, I think he like co runs uh, um, a guy trip in like Los Los Busa, Los Busa, whatever that is. But like they do, they do like offshore heavy kayak fishing and it would be, my wife can hear me, it would be like an awesome, awesome anniversary gift if I was to ever, ever be allowed to go there. <laughs> to go up. Like, I would, louder. Say it louder. Hit, hit, right? hit, hit, hit. But that's the thing with me. Like, I'm not, I'm not just going to drag my kayak to the Outer Banks and go offshore by myself. Right. I'm not safe. But uh, I would go with, like, a guide service. 
and that's one of the uh that's one of my um my go-to things like is to if I can link up and and with uh Robert Field and you know that set they got up I would be like so like that would be like a dream come true but these guys hook into fish and like get dragged miles <laughs> out of the kayaks okay. I would do it I would do it. I know it sounds crazy I would do it but, like cool. I used to before I got my kayak I used to watch his videos like back to back to back to back to back. Just binge watch them. Mm hmm. I feel like this is probably a popular answer, but it's true. And it, But, you know, John B, more so, like I looked up John B like six years ago and he was still a teenager. <laughs> yeah. Just because I was searching Ohio fishing. Sure. He was fishing like the Hocking River, which is like yeah, 70 with his, minutes with away from dad. me. <laughs> right. And like, you know, that whole area. And I like saw him, watched a few videos and just kind of left him. And then came back and rediscovered him, and he was like really getting like cinematic with his footage. And <laughs> yeah, I think he inspires a lot of people, but yeah, I, uh, I think it's more so kind of awesome that he's like a, a central to southern Ohio origins guy. Sure, he's definitely up, up, up on cool. my list like, for sure. His, his, cinematic, his camera work page. is ridiculous. It, it's a yeah, yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> unreal. I mean, he's definitely what well, out of it. I think out of everyone that is you know a part of that group, he's definitely uh to me held the most true. You know what I mean? For sure. He still does the same stuff he did five years ago. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just on a bigger scale. You know what I mean? And his, uh, his Instagram name, <laughs> John B rolling. Yeah. That's because he was the B roll King back when the fishing YouTube thing started. You know what I mean? So yeah, for sure. That's definitely, um, up on my list. Cause that's something I try to focus on in my videos too. So for sure. So I got one last question. Okay. Let's take that last one and flip it around. So what do you guys do to pass on knowledge to people that watch you? Or what do you try to do to inspire people that are watching you as your audience to keep them engaged, to, you know, kind of give them the knowledge that you picked up through your lifetime of fishing? What do you do to pass that on or help inspire them? I mean, I kind of like, I get a lot of engagement in my videos via Facebook and, um, you know, YouTube and comments and things. And, uh, for me personally, like with my channel being small still, I'm able to comment back on every comment. So I, I make I make it a point to let every viewer know that I'm reading that they're I'm reading their comment and that it matters to me. And whatever question they ask, I try my best to fulfill it honestly and truthfully with my like opinion on whatever the question might be, whether it be about my my boat that I was working on or about ice fishing. Even if they ask me something about ice fishing, I'm gonna, not going to try to make an answer up. I'm going to say, hey, this is my first time ice fishing. I have no clue what you're even talking about, you know? So um, when it comes to anything like that, even when I'm out in the water, there's been a few times when you're out in the water and someone comes up to you or you drive by via boat, kayak, and they're like, oh, you catch any? Yeah, what'd you catch it on? And then I'll make it a point to not only tell them what I caught it on, but you know, show them what I caught it on. And if they don't have any, be like, Hey, here, take a couple, like try it out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Things like that. Yeah. I mean, especially in my local waters, you know, it's good to make a good impression on the locals. You know what I mean? For sure. Yeah. I was going to say kind of the same thing, giving away. Sure. Yeah. I give away a lot of baits to like, you know, young guys or, mm -hmm. you know, guys mm -hmm. that just are just getting into it clearly and just kind of scratching the surface of, of the sport and, uh, even, even, I mean, I hate to admit it cause there will soon be some of the retailers, but I don't think it's prohibited any sales, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, if I see, you know, a young guy and his, in, in his mom or something, just perusing the fishing aisle, sure. you know, I, I always make it a, uh, a, a point to carry some, uh, like a pack of baits with me or something when I'm going into Walmart or something. And then if I see something, I'll give them, give them a pack of baits for free. But, um, Yeah. I can't tell you how many of my personal fishing poles I've given away just because someone I know or, or just a friend of a friend was like, I, I'd love to go fishing, but I don't have anything. And I'm like, no, you do now. Right. Right. And sure. Give them a fishing pole. Cause I've got like 20 fishing poles. I give right. them a fishing pole, give them a Plano box filled with a bunch of stuff, make them feel like they've got something to go out and be able to conquer the fishing yeah. world. Sure. Another thing that I think is super important that I, that I've seen some people do right and some people do wrong is that like, as they grow to not be complacent or not be excited about what some people would consider common fish. Like, I don't know. I like, I get, I get pumped up catching a green sunfish. Like, I, oh, yeah. I don't think you ever find me fishing and going, yeah, that's not what I wanted. And just, sure. you know, I've seen some channels that, that grow and get big and they're just like, they got a two pound bass 
and they go and they're, they're like there's a two pounder and they just flip it like they don't Whatever, they're not yeah. excited about yeah. it anymore they're not showing it off i i think that's important to show the 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 fire you have for fishing no matter if it's your pb or if it's just something you were targeting sure or if you caught it on accident or whatever yeah. i think not being complacent is re- very important to excite your fans and and something that goes in line with that is like always remember that you're gaining new people to fishing every day so don't leave out the new tips that you would think like i wouldn't need and i wouldn't give to you guys because you know them right but someone who's just joining the fishing world and is getting latched on to fishing don't be afraid to show them how to tie a basic knot sure don't be afraid sure. to give them the basic information on how to fish Mm-hmm. You know, and also dive deep into the tactics like we're talking about now, the deep stuff sure, yeah, and how, yeah. how to target, you know, points and depths and barometric pressure and crazy stuff like that. But never forget the people that are just learning fishing. I think it's a very important. That, that's a really good point, too, because on my channel, like I started, I had a little bit of a late start last year. So over the off season, like on top of like trying to put videos out as often as I can, um, you know, I did a lot of like trying to like plan and think of how how and what I'm going to form my because my channels it's grown like very fast for being such a small channel in just four months. But it's more or less now that the season's coming on, the subscribers that I have gained, I want to keep them around and I want to I want to entice new people who come across my videos to want to watch and learn and not, not only watch me fish and see me catch fish, but I want someone to watch and learn and say, hey. I can do that too. I want to go out and catch a fish too. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And something that I veered away from early on as far as like brainstorming on how I want my channel to be was I didn't want to do how to videos, Mm -hmm. you know, how to, how to fish a Ned rig, how to fish a jig, how to fish a square bill. What depth should you do this? What depth should you do that? I didn't want to do that because in my head there was, you can, I mean, you can look that up on YouTube and there's, you can find 400 videos that are all different, but one thing that I think a lot of people forget is that, yes, there is 400 videos. And when I was learning how to fish a Ned Rig, I looked up 400. I did not understand how to fish a Ned Rig properly until I found Brian Latimer's video on how to fish a Ned Rig and his explanation on how to do it and him fishing and showing me how to do it. And then I felt way more confident than when I watched, you know, you know, who, you know, Bassmaster, you know, do it or whatever. You know what I mean? Right, I right. took him specifically and his personality and his his uh presence and his videos to show me how to fish that specific bait so that's something i'm going to focus on a lot this year is doing a lot more um explaining opposed to you know how as opposed to me just fishing you know what i mean because that's cool and stuff and people love it but it's good to inform someone who's new who just don't, decides one day hey i'm going to look up fishing videos and i want to learn you know what i mean absolutely <laughs> I think it would be cool to maybe even orchestrate some sort of event where we could all get together at a lake or something and, and have a, a meet and greet kind of thing and then maybe do a giveaway. That would be sure. sick. Yeah. So maybe we'll have that coming mm-hmm. up. That'd be cool. Yeah. Sponsor like a, a, a one of these DNR uh, youth ponds or something and, mm-hmm. and have a day for it. But that'd be fun. One of the things that you guys, you guys kind of mentioned um, earlier, uh, and I think we all kind of share the same thing because as anglers, you know, we know how much this sport do for us. We know how much we gain from it. Uh, we know how much we appreciate the community. And I am a big uh, advocate for continuing it, especially being like from an inner city urban area and recognizing how it helps a lot with like, you know, mental health and just dealing with the stresses that you deal with daily. So like I try to, you know, I still have a lot of nephews or a lot of young people who I'm affiliated with who's still in that environment. And, you know, they always hit me up. Oh, you know, they call me Unk. You know, Unc, I want to, you know, I want to buy a kayak. Maybe my uh, my one nephew today just sent me a picture of a kayak that somebody was selling. I was like, should I buy this? You know, he's from he's from the inner city where like the, the to the to get to the closest body of water is like a forty minute drive. You know, right. but he's seeing what I'm doing and seeing my YouTube pages and seeing my Instagram and like, man, I want to do that. I'm gonna try to get a kayak so I can come out there with you next season. Like, nice. that's that's one of like that's probably eighty percent of the reason I do it. That's it's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure very for sure. very cool well is that that all we got then matt that's everything i brought to the that's table that's beautiful man that's beautiful well guys thanks again I, for like we're ignoring them too oh <laughs> uh, what'd you say i said milo's starting to get a little antsy because i'm ignoring him oh, <laughs> <there you. laughs> 
uh, well, thanks guys for your time. And, and again, and, uh, please, you know, everybody watching, uh, there at home, um, you know, show these guys some love. They put a lot of hard work into not just promoting the brand, but like kind of encouraging each other in their own videos, even, um, show them some love. We'll put links in the, in the description below. If you have any comments, um, any feedback, we love to love to love to read those. It, it fuels us. So please leave those in the comment bar to below and then be sure to smash the like button and hit that subscribe on both this channel and the other guys here. And we really appreciate you joining us today. I hope you have an awesome night from all of us at Cast Cray. Peace.